My name's Libby. I'm the textile conservation supervisor for costume here at Hampton Court Palace. Today we're in the textile conservation studio, which is where we look after all of the textiles that are within our palaces and we prepare objects for display. The object that we're working on today is a dress from the Fashion Museum in Bath. It dates from the 1660s and it's called the Silver Tissue Dress. And it's so rare because it is a bodice and a skirt that have survived together, which doesn't usually happen from this date. My name is Anne-Marie and I'm a textile conservator working here at Hampton Court Palace. I'm working on the glittering court silver tissue gown. It's made of silver tissue, which is silk with a silver thread woven through it. And it also is decorated with silk bobbin lace, which also has parchment lace threaded through it, which is paper wrapped in floss silk. This dress was worn by Lady Theophilia. She's from an ancient West Country family. They were very wealthy and they guarded the passage on the River Tamar between Devon and Cornwall. And she would have worn this beautiful gown to the court of Charles II. And it really would have been a status symbol because it has so much silver thread and this amazing bobbin lace. This is a rare survivor, over 360 years old, and the fact that we have the bodice and the skirt is a remarkable thing, because the way the skirt was fashioned, it could have been repurposed because this material is so precious with all this silver thread. These dresses were often reworked as the fashion changed through the periods. For 360 years old, it's in surprisingly good condition, but obviously with time, things age and the bobbin lace with the parchment lace as you can see here has become very crisp and misshapen over time and part of the treatment is that I need to straighten this out by working very delicately with these entomological pins to ease out the lace again and then rehydrate the fibres using ultrasonic humidification which is a very fine mist of water that I just gently move over the fibres to rehydrate them and then I leave this in position for it to relax and take the shape. And I found that Ethafoam was very good for pinning into because I could mould it, it's lightweight, and I can pin into it easily without causing any damage. The bodice is made of multi-layers and um, it's boned with whalebone, which is sewn into strips within the bodice to create this wonderful shape. Um, so it has the outer layer of the silver tissue, which is silk and silver thread woven together. And then inside it has the strips with the whalebone. On the inside, it's lined with a very fine linen to cover all these component parts. And it also has pasteboard in to try and stiffen areas as well. So it's an incredible structure. These pins are used for pinning out insects. They don't damage the lace in any way or the fabric because they're so fine. They don't break the weave. And I have these wonderful little loops here that you can see that were all folded under. And by using the entomological pins, I was able to straighten these out. So you can now see that the edge of the lace is now reshaped rather than all creased and folding under. This is a skirt with a pocket and it, this is actually wool and you can see it's had some insect damage. Um, and I just found it really interesting that it has a wool pocket in this amazing silk and silver dress, but it is lined up to this point so that if it had been seen, you would see silk from this point on. But I will have to net this because just to keep it all together, um, so that it's protected when I'm handling, for when I'm mounting the object. It's a real privilege to work on this dress. What I love about it is seeing how these things are made and celebrating the craftsmanship that went into creating the lace, for one, and also the weavers who actually wove this material, let alone the dressmakers that then shaped this into a beautiful, spectacular outfit. <laughs>